Hey, Ben here with Studio on the Lake. This is uh, part one of what's looking like maybe three, uh, possibly four. Uh, I decided to do a baby snow owl, um, which I probably should have done a big owl, but uh, still no equipment. This was all uh, done out of the, a block of basswood with uh, a sawzall. There's the rough pattern that I, I used. And uh, if you've seen me use a pattern before, I just pulled that down off the web and uh, enlarged it to the point where I, I liked it. You can see he's got a foot sticking forward in there. Uh, and this is the only time you'll see that reference in there. He's got that one foot stuck forward. He got kind of uh, um, uh, funky looking feathers, if that makes sense. You got baby birds have, uh, or my exaggerated ones, have uh, more pronounced feathers on there. They're not as smooth, and you can see that that's what I'll eventually go for in the back. And uh, then his tail sticks out under. He's, he's got his head turned to the side. Uh, like owls do and uh, whatnot. And then I'm just gonna leave him on what you see between the saw cut in my hand, that line I just drew there, uh, that's gonna be him. So I've got this big chunk of basswood, pulled it out of the shed. None of the basswood got lost in the fire and I thought I'd show you uh, how dangerous this, this bad boy here is. So here's the Sawzall. It's got a psycho blade on it, not the newest uh, for doing tree limbs and that sort of thing and this this is probably as bad if not worse than what I do with my uh, um, grinder and that stuff on there but uh, so don't try this at home and by all means if you have a vice like Jordy Johnson uses in uh, uh, some of the chainsaw carvers um, use a uh, step step uh, vise or uh, um, sawhorse with uh, clamps in it that would certainly help so you can see all the various cuts I didn't show you as I whittle this guy down I would have done this on the bandsaw I'm still uh, in the process I've got the money uh, for replacing the tools uh, we we got some of the half the money for replacing the building but that had to be sent to the mortgage company and uh, they seem to be dragging their ass on uh, on endorsing their part of the check and then sending it back so I can line up contractors. Uh, I started working with one contractor and decided not to go with him because he's difficult to get a hold of. I spent a week and a half trading phone calls with him and uh, decided that if he couldn't return phone calls that uh, I, I didn't want him working on my project. So that's the progress on the rebuild of the studio. Um, waiting on uh, various different people to clear money and then looking for a contractor uh, and then I, I need to do some some clearance of the older part of the building I think I'll do that myself and uh, get ready for concrete people to come in and uh, I did enlarge it just a little bit and put a cutout on the lakeside a 5 by 10 foot cutout uh, grand designs uh, newer bigger better better and uh, I'll show you those as they come along and I got to get someone to draw the plans up. So uh, all projects start in, in my book with blocking it out. Uh, this has been blocked out uh, roughly with that Sawzall. And this is probably the same level I would have gone to uh, had I had the bandsaw. Um, I'm drawing the face in now to get the reference lines. You can see his tail is sticking out underneath and you can see uh, the claw, uh, the foot, uh, his right foot will be sticking out. So that'll have to go up in there. And right now I'm, I, he's rather blocky and I'm trying to lay that face out when I start start working on this. But he's, he's gonna be a snowy owl. Uh, I'll paint him, I, I think I might even show you the paint on this one. A uh, whole lot of white, because he's a uh, snow owl. <laughs> Imagine that. And uh, later on, you'll see when I when I laid this out, I laid the nose, for lack of better reference, and the beak uh, a little bit long, and I went ahead and carved that in. And then uh, at some point, I'll tell you in this video where I went back and, and shortened that up. So if you're looking at this guy and thinking, oh man, that nose is way too long, it is. And if you've seen me treat beaks uh, on other birds, uh, I do the same thing. So there's uh, center lines. You got to use your imagination to get those in. And obviously.
obviously that's a wing. And I, I'm, not, I'm thinking I'm not going to carve the other foot, but you know how that works out uh, when I get there. So painful. Uh, this part right here, I had the uh, um, rough cuts all in there. And I, I talked about in the other videos, if you follow along, uh, one of them was out of balance. And it wasn't too long before this one started getting out of whack. And uh, I, I had to retire it. So that's $30 worth of two cuts all bits that uh, have a lot of vibration in that hand piece. And uh, initially, my, my thoughts and concerns, because I'm, I, this is a RAM IQ uh, piece, and there's, there's how far down I took it. I didn't go all the way because I'm getting ready to set the eyes in. I just kind of want to get the head shape. But uh, I'm using a IQ RAM, and it's uh, uh, one of the lower range. It's not the cheapest one, but it's somewhere in the middle. And I think I'm going to go from the $200 uh, RAM up to the $600 one. Uh, but that handpiece was vibrating quite a bit, and, and I, it was annoying me. And it turned out that it was, it was that bit. So I may send those back to cuts all because they really kind of came a little bit wonky out of the box. And I haven't had nothing but good luck with cuts all. So that's not a cut on the cuts all uh, group. But uh, for some reason, those two bits uh, don't like it. I may change the collet in that and see if that uh, makes a difference. But uh, that handpiece has to calm down a little bit for, for me to, to stay happy with it. Uh, or uh, I might be looking at something like the Oz 2 Plus uh, in the future. If, if that uh, turns out to be the handpiece that's vibrating and not the, the cut cells. But right now I put a good uh, older bit in there and it, it smooths itself right down. Still has a little bit more of a break, vibration than I would like. Um, and you can see there I, I've switched to a ruby bit. And uh, this guy is going to get glass eyes, but you know me, I, I like to see the eyes. The eyes, to me, once I get them in on, on the birds, that it, it makes them kind of come alive. And you won't get to see in this video the setting of the eyes. That'll be in part two. But at the end, I'll give you a little preview of part two, and you'll see it with the eyes set in. And I'll talk about a, a pair of eyes that made it through the fire but had some cracks in one side, and I decided not to use those. So I'm, I'm kind of roughing in an eye there. And at, at this point, I was wondering if maybe I wanted to do it w without the glass eyes. And uh, to me, the glass eyes make such a big difference that uh, I eventually decided that I, I was going to go ahead and put the eyes in it and, and not do the wood and the paint. I, I can paint them, the glass, I can paint the eyes so that they look a lot like the glass eyes a close representation but it takes a couple more steps in the painting uh, to make those do that and, and, and that, to me they still don't look as good as a good set of glass eyes we'll talk about that when we go in there so a lot of this I ran uh, two times because it's very painful I would have shaped a lot of this with the uh, right angle grinder with a a sanding four and a half inch sanding disc on there probably a 36 grit 24 or 36 I don't differentiate between the two I grab whatever uh, is in the store grab a pack of four or six of them uh, and uh, go to town but the, the grinders have not been replaced yet uh, I'm in the process of setting up another another bank account to uh, replace tools and that sort of thing just to keep the money separate and then a, a builders account at the same time and it'll probably be another two weeks before I, I do that. I might pick up a cheap grinder. I think the DeWalt that I'm using is uh, close to 200 bucks. Uh, that DeWalt was, was probably 10 years old. And, and I'll go back to one like that. And then you'll get to see me pull the guards off of it. And all the good stuff that keeps you safe. So I went ahead and pinned in the, uh, the eyes. Just to see... Uh, in my brain what this character was going to start looking like and thus far I'm kind of liking him uh, and I'm calling him a baby because he's a lot smaller obviously and I'm going to put kind of immature feathers on there like I do on my baby birds with a little more exaggerated uh, them poking out not quite defined not quite laying one laying over the other in a smooth context and when I started looking at these owls, there's some really weird stuff on an owl going on uh, beneath their wings, in their tails, and then in their feet. Their feet are just about as big as their whole body. Uh, and, and, and 
They've got a lot of feathers that kind of go all wonky. They aren't tail feathers, they're underneath. And uh, uh, when I start doing the, the two bigger owls, uh, the great horned owl and, and then a, a big version of this snowy owl, uh, I'll show you some reference material on those. And uh, it's, it's a little difficult to figure out what the heck is going on underneath, uh, the, between the tail, the wing, and the feet on the bottom there. So not having uh, that right angle grinder, I would have uh, thrown that on the stump and, and went to town. I'm at the process where I'm splitting. I've got a chisel in my hand, and this is a fishtail, a little bit of a fishtail. And I, I, I'm, it's not doing really cutting on that. It is now cutting like a chisel. Uh, it's not 100% sharp, but it's, it's, it's adequate for what I'm doing, which is removing a ton of wood and it would have taken me half an hour with the grinder, the small grinder, um, to get, get that down. So I'm, st I'm still shaping the body, starting to contour in. And you'll notice as I go down in here, this wood splits off real nice and that's what I'm taking advantage of. So the grain is running uh, from the base straight up through his head. And if you'll uh, put a stop cut, in, in reality, where the bottom of that block is cut into there, that is a stop cut. And you see me putting stop cuts in right there. So then I'll come back and, and take a V out of the bottom of that. And that just saves exponential time with the grinder. And you can do all of that with, uh, with chisels if, if you so desire and you don't need the power carvers. But now I'm, I'm doing the same thing, taking, taking the corners off the wings or the wing, uh, I don't do the back wing just yet in this, and this would be so much better uh, had I taken it over to a bench and uh, put it uh, in a vise, it would have been held. But again, I'm lazy and I don't, I don't actually have a bench and a vise available to me. I have a bench next door if I had to go abuse my daughter's shop, but uh, she, she wants to keep her shop to herself and doesn't want to share. So uh, I may do some stuff over there that I need to, but uh, other than that, like the bandsaw when it comes in, uh, will come in long before the, um, the building is built and I'll, I'll probably put that over there after I ask permission, of course. So I'm just kind of working the one side of him right now, trying to get the wing and the, and the head. The head is not even close to done. Uh, there's a lot more contour and I'm gonna burn burn and stone all the feathers in And you know this this video is going to end with a, a little bit of work on one of the wings and here I'm taking away material and once again, I would have uh, threw that on the stump and used that right angle grinder to get that uh, blank down where I wanted to and then I would have went back to the micro carver but since uh, this is what I have, this is what we're using. It gives you an opportunity to see uh, another way of doing things. You could, of course, do this with a, a hand knife, uh, a bench knife, carver's knife, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you could have just uh, sliced away on that until you got that down, and there's nothing wrong with that. My intent, and a lot of this, is to um, get the piece done, get it, get it filmed, and uh, as it is, I think this initial part had about five hours of filming in it, just to give you a reference. And I, I'm, I don't remember, but I think it's somewhere around the 20 minute mark when I cut it down. So it takes a little while to get this down. And if you're not filming and not planning on putting it on, on YouTube, then uh, you've got nothing but time. And it, it's relaxing to do at that point. I mean, uh, if I really were to do a competition piece, it, it quite literally, I could get three or 400 hours in, in the piece because I would think about each and plan out each uh, section. As this is, I'm, I'm kind of letting this guy evolve. And, uh, and since he is a baby bird and I'm gonna take license with it and make it cute as opposed to anatomically correct, he's, he's getting, uh, be a little bit shorter so there's the wing is set out pretty nice the face is, is looking good a little bit of the depth there you can see some spots on the head particularly the back and around the sides where I haven't haven't got that block down 
So here's what I was talking about. I, here's a pair of eyes that came out. I, I got two more eyes, sets of eyes. This one, they, I thought they came through the fire, and I'm looking at them. There, one side of them is chipped up and cracked, uh, and it's it's really evident. It doesn't show up as well in this. And I thought, well, since these are going to be up underneath like that, if you imagine the top of that eyelid covering about uh, a fourth of that eye up underneath the eyelid, I thought I could hide the broken, cracked part up under there. But there was a couple cracks in the bottom, too, that don't show up in the filming. And I just turned the crack on that one up into the eyelid to see if it would do what I wanted it to do. And... Uh, at this point, the jury was still out. I was still deciding if I wanted to salvage these eyes. And I was thinking maybe I could put some uh, fingernail polish or lacquer in there, let it flow around the crack and, and make the crack go away. Uh, I may try that before I set them in something. And I, if I do, I'll film that for you because that's how I fix them if I hit them with a burr. If I put the eyes in and I hit them with the burr and scratches them, I'll put some fingernail polish on there or lacquer. And uh, it seems to take care of it. You, you can still see it a little bit if you look, but uh, it, it saves a lot of work. So I got the wing kind of rough shaped there. And uh, you saw just the corner of this. If you saw the micro or you saw the burner, the Optima, I keep wanting to call it an Ultima. Why would you name Optima Ultima? Pat, shame on you over at PJL Enterprises. Uh, so it's an Optima dual burner. It's just like the ones that I had in my dual setup. And there's the wing, the coverlets, and then this is the tail feathers that I'm intending to do on it. And being a baby, uh, he would, they would be a little bit shorter and stubbier on the tail than a full grown out. And there is a tail underneath there, and I haven't even started to block that out. That's that big hook curvy part that's underneath that wing. So here's a brand new pen. Um, hasn't been used. I set these on uh, that Optima burner. Uh, run them at about, at, I think I'm running at six on these, one through ten, uh, six, six and a half. And I just wanted to outline the eyes to see it and then the beak. And now if you're watching, that beak is a, is a hair too long. And I knew that when I started to outline it. So I end up moving that up quite a bit. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you when I do that. So the first thing to these feathers, and you're not going to get the full feather treatment, that's going to be in uh, part two. I'm just laying out the shape, and I'm, I'm burning in stop cut lines, and I'm going to come back with a burr, and I'm going to round these feathers over and layer them, and then I will come back with the wood burner and burn all those feathers in about three times, three passes over that, and then the rest of the body will get the same way. And there you can see I jumped ahead. I'm not to the part where I, I'm getting ready to do the, um, or about to the part where I'm going to do the undercut, and uh, that you will get in video part two. So these are the tail feathers of Dylan Aiden. That's actually real time. The pen does not get hot. Uh, that probably took 20 minutes to burn those, and it's not getting hot. It's I got the heavy duty pen, and voila. I gotta come back and, and finish those. So there's a preview coming up here in just a second. You'll get to, to see those feathers all burned in. The eyes are set and you'll get that in part two of the video. So baby Al, uh, part one's complete and this will be part two. And then I will show you the finish of it and then the painting. So hey, thanks a lot. This has been Ben with Studio on the Lake. <laughs>